Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Feel with your wonders. Hear I surrender, held in the mysteries of your grace, calling me closer, waking desire, coming alive in your name. Yes, Lord God, thank you, Jesus. We bless your name, O oh God. Holy, holy is the Lord worthy to be praised Yahweh fires rising in my soul all consuming flame Yahweh you are Yahweh you are the Lord of glory you are the Alpha and Omega you're the self-existing God you rule, you reign, you have dominion and authority. There's no one like you in all the earth, O oh God. We bask in your presence. We exalt you, Lord. You are holy. Holy, holy is the Lord. You're worthy to be praised. We magnify you, O oh Lord. We glorify you. Our souls make us boast in you, God. We declare your majesty. You are arrayed in splendor. You're clothed in glory. You are the living word. You are the fountain of life. We honor you, King Jesus. We declare that you grew up great. You are marvelous. You are sovereign. You are the fountain of life. You are the living word. We rejoice in you, O oh God. And we declare that you're great, O oh God. You reign over all the earth from eternity to eternity. You're the same God today, yesterday, and forever. And Lord God, in the name of Jesus, We just worship you. We worship you, Lord, because you're worthy. Every day you wake us up in the morning, gave us another opportunity to get things right. You've forgiven us of our sins, past, present, and future sins. You paid the price on the cross that we would no longer have to be victimized by our sin nature, influenced by the enemy. You said in your word, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And Lord God, I say thank you that you are the beginning of our lives. You're the ending of our life. There is no in between. Either we're going to walk in righteousness or we're going to walk in darkness. 
He who was and is to come is the one who lives in us, the great I am. You are Yahweh. You are the most holy God. You are Father God, the great I am. And Lord, we thank you today that you're working in our lives, oh God, to draw our attention to you. That everything around us, everything we do, will fall dung, useless, in the presence of the Lord, if it's not bringing you glory. Paul declared in your word, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. For it's Christ who lives in me, who gave his life for me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. And Lord God, we declare and decree today, O oh God, that we are clothed in righteousness. We are arrayed in splendor. We are, Father God, surrounded by your presence. That when the enemy comes to attack God, he sees Jesus. The King of glory standing before us. Lord, we thank you today that we are redeemed from the curse of the law through the blood of Jesus. We decree and declare that we are the blessed seeds of Abraham and his blessing is ours. We choose blessings instead of cursings, life instead of death. We break and release ourselves from all generational curses and iniquities as a result of sin of our ancestors in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we break and release ourselves from all curses on both sides of our families back 60 generations. We break all curses of witchcraft, sorcery, and divination in the name of Jesus. We break and release ourselves from all curses of pride and rebellion in the name of Jesus. We break and release ourselves from all curses of death and destruction in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come in agreement with your word, O oh God, that we have been set free from the yoke and the bondages of sin and been clothed in your righteousness. And we're now seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Lord God, I thank you that we break and rebuke all curses of sickness and infirmities in the name of Jesus. We break and release ourselves from all curses of poverty, lack, and debt in the name of Jesus. God bless you. We thank you, Father God that we break and release from our lives, oh God, all curses of rejection in the name of Jesus. Many feel like they're worthless. They feel like no one cares about them. Their hearts are heavy. They're wounded. They're broken. But yet, God, your word decrees that we, Father God, have been bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. And therefore, we're not our own, but we belong to a mighty God. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I break and release from our lives all curses of double-mindedness and schizophrenia in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, that every attack that the enemy brought against us, your people, God, will not prosper. Because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And your word says, no weapon formed against us will prosper. 
and every tongue that rise against us in judgment, you said we shall condemn. And Father God, we condemn the spirit and the lies of the enemy of God of schizophrenia and double mindedness right now, God, that we have a sound mind, a peaceful mind. Our minds are staying on the Lord. We're rooted and grounded in faith, oh God, to not live a mindset of the world, Father, of carnality. The mind of carnality, oh God, is a defeated lifestyle. It's a defeated mindset. It's defeated, oh God, because of the enemy's tactics to use it in place of failure. And Lord, we come in the name of Jesus, decree and declare that we are free and whom the Son has set free is free indeed. We claim our freedom. We take authority over our freedom. We take authority, Father God, over the attack the enemy brings against our freedom that we will no longer be bound, yoked up, tied up in bondage of the enemy, oh God, because we have been set free. And Father, I break and release from our lives all curses of Jezebel and Ahab in the name of Jesus. Those controlling demonic forces of God that will come to Father God to manipulate and control us to walk in Father God rebellion against the word of God. We decree and declare today, God, that the enemy is being smitten by the word of God, that we're standing on the promises of God. And we know with confidence, God, that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And because you are the greater one, God, we're standing victorious. Father, I break and release from our lives all curses of lust and perversion in the name of Jesus. I break and release from our lives, oh God, all curses of confusion and mental illness in the name of Jesus. I break and release from our lives all curses of idolatry and witchcraft in the name of Jesus. I break and release from our lives all curses causing accidents and premature death in the name of Jesus. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I break and release ourselves from all curses of wandering and a vagabond spirit. Father, that poverty spirit in the name of Jesus. I break and release from our lives all spoken curses and negative words spoken against ourselves or God by ourselves or other people in authority. And we bless our enemies as your word commands us, God, to pray for those who despitefully misuse us and say our men are evil against us falsely for your name's sake. And Father, I thank you. I command every demon hiding and operating behind a curse in stealth mode in our life to come out and be exposed in the name of Jesus. And Father, as we engage in our lesson tonight, oh God, dealing with the spirit of infirmity, open up our eyes to see, to take a personal examination of our hearts, to see what infirmities have infiltrated our structure. What have we allowed our ear gates to hear, our eyes to see, our minds to receive, and our hearts to, Father God, be rooted and grounded in? That whatever it is that's not like God will be exposed and stripped out of our lives by the blood of the Lamb and the Word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I thank you, Lord God, that he who the Son has set free is free indeed. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for tuning in tonight, everyone. Thank you, Pastor Cornell and, and, and Pastor Owens and Sister uh, Dorothy and, and Linda. God bless you, sis. Good to see you here tonight. And I tell you, I, I'm just so excited, you know, about God's word. Because as we've been studying, you know, these last several months concerning different tactics and strongholds the enemy uses to infiltrate our structures, God has been revealing many different secrets that the enemy has lodged in our hearts to keep us blinded by. That's why it's so important as the people of the Lord to pray for exposure, to pray for a spirit of conviction, to come into our hearts that we would recognize and that we would see what tactic 
or strategy the enemy has planted in our lives to use against us to keep us in bondage. So many people are bound with many types of infirmities and many of those infirmities begins with a spiritual attack. Some have a physical illness. Most of all originate from a spiritual attack. Many things that happen in our lives, I said this before, is there's a spirit behind the spirit. So when you're attacked by the enemy with infirmities, you have to recognize what spirit you entertained before the thing came upon you. The enemy uses many different weapons to come into your life to stop you in your tracks to make you blinded from the truth. And we have to begin to identify what those things are that he used against us as people of the Lord to keep us in a place of entrapment. If we don't recognize the enemy when he comes in, in that stealth mode. Stealth mode means come in unaware. The enemy comes in unaware. God bless you, uh, uh, Sister uh, uh, Monique. God bless you, Courtney. The enemy comes in stealth mode. And a lot of people are like, how did he come in a stealth mode? What do you mean by that? The enemy doesn't always reveal himself right away to you. He comes in a way that's subtle. Like he did in Genesis chapter 3 when he came into the Garden of Eden. He came in a subtle way. An enticing, lurable way to get you to believe what he's going to say to you. That he can pull you into his entrapment. And we do the same thing Every day of our lives, when we're not prayed up, we're not consecrated, we're not seeking God's face, we become vulnerable, we open up our ear gates, our eye gates, our mouth begin to confess and say things that's not of God, what God has not said in his word, so we get into agreement with the thought life. The enemy attacks the thought life, and he knows whatever thought he puts in you that's contrary to God's word if you don't recognize that voice when speaking to you, the enemy knows I can slowly bait you in. I can put some things before you that's going to gratify your flesh. That's going to cause you to fall into the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Why? Because he knows what the flesh loves to do. He knows what, what captivates your attention. So he brings those things. God bless you, Dr. Shane. He brings those things to you to entrap you in his snares. You know, I, I was thinking about how a hunter, when he goes out to uh, go deer hunting, a hunter goes out with a purpose to try to get him a buck. You know, probably a, a nine foot buck or whatever the case is, eight foot buck. But, uh, you know, but the thing is, he knows what to put out there that's going to lure the, the, the deer into his, an area where he is where he can shoot him. The enemy does the same thing. He knows what to put before you that's going to captivate your attention. God bless you, Dr. Lee. He knows what's going to captivate your attention. So he put those things before you. To lure you into the trap. And when he gets you to the place where he got you. Then he shoots you. The enemy doesn't, doesn't. Like I said. He doesn't come right away to attack you. He comes in subtle ways to attack you. Until you find yourself falling away slowly and slowly. From the will and the plan that God has for your life. So our lesson tonight. The spirit of infirmity. It says we have ministered the word. As missionaries, evangelists. In many areas of faith, healing, and deliverance for many years, both in Latin America and the United States. This is from the book, The Strong Man, What's His Name, What's His Game? So we're convinced by both the Word of God and by experience that God is, God's will is to save, to heal, and deliver anyone who will accept Christ as Lord and Savior of his life, believe the Word, live according to the Word, and act on the Word of God with a sp special faith that comes by hearing the word of God. You know, I love this point here because for many generations, the gospel is being preached. And the gospel, we think, is just the salvation of Jesus Christ. That's not the gospel. The gospel is preaching the kingdom of heaven is, is, is at hand. 
Jesus made it clear. He said, many are going to say the kingdom of God is over there or over, over there, different places. But he said, the kingdom of God is within you, which is the kingdom authority, the kingdom power, the kingdom right, the kingdom privileges that God has given us in his word. We have entitlement to every precious promise God has in his word. So the enemy wants you to get into a place where you don't know the word of God. So you don't know what the gospel is. So we get stuck on the gospel of salvation. The gospel goes beyond salvation. Salvation is a continual process, a continual work in our lives to perfect your life, to become more and more created and begin fashioned in the image and likeness of God who, who created it. So as this point says here, the gospel, you know, is being preached throughout the, you know, the United States and many other places, you know, to accept Christ as Lord and Savior of our life. Believe the word of God. Hear the word of God. Act upon the word of God. Grow in faith by receiving the word. You, without faith, we can't receive the word of God. So our faith must be anchored in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the foundation of faith, in order to receive the word of God that's able to empower you. Here's a story. It says, I remember an elderly lady in Mananagua, in Nicaragua, who came to our open crusade. She had been bent double at the waist for 20 years after accepting the Lord and believing his word she was instantly healed and walked back home straight as everyone else there's a spirit that will cause you to be crippled in your spinal cord that's that bit where you bent over and you can't straighten up I've seen people in those conditions that that's been that way for many years but God has the power to take what's crooked and make it straight. But it takes faith to believe in God's word that God can do it. Without faith in God's word, many things in our lives would not change, would not be healed, would not be delivered until we recognize this is a spirit I'm dealing with. This is a stronghold I'm dealing with. This is an attack from the enemy I'm dealing with. Until we recognize what it is and begin to speak against that thing with the word of God, decree the word of God, stand on the word of God, declare the word of God, meditate on the word of God, get the word inside of you, then the word can manifest on the outside of you. But until you put the word in, no deposit, no return. So the word is not going to produce anything in your life until you plant it in your heart. If the word is not planted on the inside, how do we expect God to heal us if we're not studying his word? We have to know what the word says about the enemy. We got to know who our enemy is. We got to know the strategic plan of our enemy. We, we're not ignorant of the enemy devices because God said he made those things known to us when we're praying and seeking his face. When I seek God's face, God will warn you that the enemy is about to attack you sometime. God will give you a, a revelation. A rhema word from the Logos, the word of God, to let you know that you're under attack. Many incidents in the Bible, in the Old Testament, when the people of God were at the place of being attacked, God's word, when they sought the Lord, God delivered them. When they turned from the Lord, they were led into captivity. We do the same thing today. God deliver us from certain things in our lives. We go like a dog back to our vomit. We devour the same old sinful issue. We go and eat the same old garbage. We get back into the garbage truck. Begin to filtrate our, our tabernacle with so much junk. When God's trying to deliver us, instead of being delivered, we become more and more entrapped and bound. Help me, Holy Ghost. This, this, I know a lot of people are going to like this word, but this, this is what God says. It says, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bound together and could, could in no wise lift herself up. When Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Luke chapter 13, verse 11 through 13. Luke chapter 13, verse 11 to 13. A woman who was bowed within the spirit of infirmity for 18 years, who was bent in her structure. Jesus saw her, commanded her to come to him. And when she came to him, he spoke a word to her. A rhema word. 
a word from the heart of God commanded her with a stern word to be loosed from her infirmity. God is speaking to someone tonight who hearing this word that you must be loose from your infirmity. Your infirmity can be drug, drug addiction. It can be alcoholism. It can be fornication. It can be adultery. It can be a lying spirit. It can be witchcraft. It doesn't matter what it is that's your infirmity. God is speaking a word to you tonight to be loose from your infirmity. And it says, this woman, after she received her healing, immediately, it happened immediately. Some things take place instantly, and some things take place in a process. God would draw you to the place where you have to keep seeking his face, keep trusting and believing in him, keep fasting and consecrating yourself until some things are broken off your life. Jesus made it clear, some things won't leave, and some demons won't even leave until you fast and pray. We have to get in tune with God's frequency. When you hear God's frequency, then the Spirit of God begins to speak by divine unction of the Holy Ghost and give you divine instruction on which direction to take, how to approach certain things in your life, and how to break it off your mindset. The issues the enemy uses against a people of God is the mindset. If he can trick you with infirmity in your mind, he can entrap you where your whole body will begin to follow suit and line up with the infirmity. In verse 16, Jesus spoke more clearly concerning this cause of the woman's condition. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound? Check this out. He said, whom Satan has bound, which is an indication that the enemy himself can bind you up with an infirmity. He said, for 18 years, he commanded her to be loose from this bondage. God is speaking tonight. He's making it clear to us that we must identify the infirmity. We must recognize the enemy behind the infirmity. Then we must speak the word against that infirmity. And your word has power when you mix it with the faith of God's word that decree and declare that you are loose from your infirmity. He said, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So if you bind this infirmity, this sickness, this disease, this sin issue, you bind it in the name of Jesus from your mindset, from your heart, from your spirit, I guarantee the power behind that thing will be broken off your life. Luke was very careful to note that the spirit of infirmity uses sickness to bind people. We all know the gospel of Luke. Luke was a chief physician. He was a physician. One of the gospels, one of the apostles. And Luke made it clear that some issues that will attack itself, attack us, attack us in our lives is sickness, which comes from the spirit of infirmity. And when we recognize what it is that's attacking us, then we need to get into a place where we begin to seek God's face and begin to get understanding what this thing is, where it comes from, and send it back to the pit of hell where it belongs. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made an oh show of them openly, triumphing them over them in the cross. Jesus made an open spectacle of every attack the enemy would bring against you. He made it visible. And brought clarity to those things that we as a believer would know what it is we've been attacked with. You got to get in the word. You got to get in the word. Colossians chapter 2.15. It says he, open, oh, he made an open spectacle. In the garden of Eden, God instructed Adam. But, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest it, therefore thou shalt surely die. When Eve broke the commandment of God and acted as Satan accomplice in attempting Adam, the result of their sin was death for the entire human race. Adam and Eve 
die in an instant. Spiritually, as sin slashed the course of fellowship between God and mankind, physical death was more gradual as death fastened its tentacles on their bodies for the first time. After a period of centuries, the perfect body that God had fashioned finally succumbed to the disease and Adam died. Isn't it amazing how in the Garden of Eden, this where the origination of the sin started, the moment Adam and Eve rebelled against God's command and gave into the enticement of the enemy, death entered in, sin entered in, the eyes became open. So the garment of glory that clothed them and covered them from their nakedness has now been ripped from them because of the enemy's tactic. The enemy brought sin into the garden they gave into the enemy's tactics, abandoned their position and their authority. Now they became stripped and naked, and now they're victimized by the enemy called sin. The reason why sin is in the world today is because we all have fallen under the same strategic plan of the enemy to be enticed by the sin nature. The ground rules are the same. When we obey God's command, there is healing for us. If we follow the devil's lies and unbelief and fear, our health will be negatively affected. There's so many great truths in this book concerning God's word. Our health is attacked because of unbelief. When we fail to trust God's word and stand on God's word, unbelief will begin to captivate your attention, pull you from the truth of God's word, and bring you to the entrapment when you fall into the pit of despair. That sin nature, unrighteousness, now you're naked, and now you're trying to figure out a way to cover up your nakedness. We do the same thing today when God says we've been created in his image and likeness, we've been clothed in his righteousness and filled with his glory. We do the very same thing. We fall into the bait of Satan. We get entrapped. And then we find a, try to find a way to cover up our sin nature. God wants us to be aware of these things the enemy uses against you. We got to be wise people, God. We got to open up our eyes. We got to seek God's face. We got to consecrate. We got to pray. We got to get into the presence of God on a daily basis where we hear God's voice guiding, instructing, counseling us. Jesus was made in the likeness of men. Philippians chapter 2 verse 7. He took infirmities and he bore our sicknesses. Matthew chapter 8 verse 17. And with his stripes we are healed. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5. Luke mentioned that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Emphasis added, you see it, it is God's will to heal all who are oppressed of the devil. It is God's will to heal all who are oppressed of the devil. Jesus would certainly not do anything against the will of God. We must know God's word. We must feed on God's word. We must be clothed in God's word. The reason why it says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse uh, 10, and further part of that chapter, it says, put on the full armor of God. In other words, you've got to be clothed in the word on a daily basis in order to prevent these attacks from taking control of your life. It's very important that we allow the Spirit of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us to guide us into all truth, to instruct us and counsel us in the right way to go that we be pleasing sacrifice before the Lord. Just as Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world, so he also paid the price for our healing by receiving the stripes upon his back. It is as unreasonable to believe that God does not want to save everyone from their sin. As it says, he does not want them to be healed from their diseases, which is a lie of the devil. God wants everyone to be healed. The atonement that Jesus provided for us 
was a complete work for our bodies, our souls, and our spirits, and our minds. Jesus accomplished the success of overcoming the spirit of infirmity because he took it upon himself that we would not have to pay the penalty for it. So he gave us the righteousness. He gave us the Holy Spirit. He gave us the word of God, which would give us the entitlement to receive healing in our minds, body, soul, and spirit. How strange is it that Christians who believe God only heals certain people doesn't hesitate to go to the hospital when he is sick? You would think he should stay, stay sick and not go against what he feels it is God's will for him. So in other words, many people have been taught that God uses sickness to teach us a lesson. That's a lie from the devil. God never in his word, nowhere in the word of God, said, I'm going to strike you with sickness to teach you how to obey me. I'm going to strike you with sickness to teach you how to follow my word and commands. Never in the word of God, God has spoken anything like that against his people. I remember God telling the children, he said, none of these afflictions will come upon you that I put upon the Egyptians. He said, will come upon you when you obey my commands. We must obey God's word. We must get the word in our heart. We must be consistent. In the word of God. We got to get into the word of God. And allow the word of God to change our thinking. To cleanse us by the blood of the lamb. And to purify our thoughts and our actions by the word of God. That we be filled with the godly desire to do what's right. To glorify God. The writer says, I always ask those people. If they discipline or teach their children by injuring them in some brutal manner. Because they love their children, they are horrified that I would even suggest a thing. But God does, doesn't does love us too, you know, too with an everlasting love, does he? God loves an everlasting love. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. said, so God is love. So how can we attribute to our loving father such terrible acts by putting cancer in one of his children or other sicknesses and, 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 and not able to heal them? God is able to heal anything that comes upon us. God will never afflict you with something that's going to destroy you. God promises there's life and peace in his word. God promises that when I get into the word of God, the word of God will restructure my life in the order, in the plan, in the purpose he has for my life. So in God's plan... It's success. It's God's plan. It's wellness. It's God's plan for you to prosper. In God's plan, it's for you to continue to walk in divine nature and not be afflicted by the enemy. But just in case we become afflicted by anything the enemy brings our way, we have an advocate, which is Jesus Christ. And he forever liveth in the body to make intercession for us. But we must know the word that I said again and again and again. We got to get in God's word on a daily basis to know what God says in his word about you. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not to be ashamed. Rightly divine the word of truth. You must study God's word. Jesus puts it this way, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. St. John chapter 10, verse 10. This is what God wants to do in our lives, give you a successful, abundant life. But we got to study to show ourselves the proof. We got to get in God's word and allow the word to manifest on the inside. Jesus paid the price for our sin so we would not have to die. He took our infirmities so we would not have to suffer. Why some have difficult receiving healing? That's a question. Why do some people have difficult receiving healing? Some of the points in the book I found fascinating. It says, then why aren't some Christians healed? The answer is very in some, and as the number of believers who are seemingly not healed, is that here are a few general reasons that some people are not healed. They got a personal checklist. One point, is unconfessed sins. 
in a Christian life. Unconfessed sin will prevent you from receiving healing. Paul told James to write to the church, he said, if there are any sick among you, James chapter St. James chapter 5, verse 12. So any sick among you, let them call for the elder church. And they pray for him. If he commit any sin, that they will be forgiven, and then he'll be healed. So unconfessed sin, if you don't confess your sin, that unconfessed sin prevents you from tapping into the anointing to receive the healing that God promises in his word to deliver you. Psalm 66 verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I, you, me, regard, cherish, hold on to, keep in my heart, unconfessed sin, the Lord will not hear me. That's the word of God. If I'm going to hold on to the secret treasures, I mentioned this before, we have a spiritual treasure box. And that treasure box, if you're storing in that treasure box, your secret sins, your, your addictions, your habits, your issues, and you're not letting go of those things, that's unconfessed sin. And God says, if you hold on to that thing, if you save your life, you're going to lose it. But if you lose your life for Christ's sake, then you gain life. So we have to be willing to allow the Holy Spirit to begin to examine our hearts, to reveal to us the things that are secretly hidden in our hearts. That's why God says when you go into your secret closet and you pray, so your father who sees and sees you in secret will reward you openly. How? Because in the midst of a secret closet, whatever unconfessed sin that I have on the inside of me, I can expose it before God in my chamber of seeking God's face. And God promises, I will deliver you. The reward that God has for a believer is deliverance, prosperity, is healing, is strength, it's victory. But many times we hold on to our junk and we expect God to heal us. And God says it's not going to happen that way. Faith without works is dead. You say you got faith in God's word, then the faith of God on the inside of your heart is going to move you to a place of conviction where you're going to hear God's voice and you're going to be convicted in your heart to let go of whatever it is you're holding on to. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord is unworthy, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of our Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat the bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, check this out, for this cause, what cause? Of eating and drinking the Lord's body unworthily. For this cause, eating and drinking unworthily, bringing damnation to yourself. He says, for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In other words, they die prematurely. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27 through 30. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27 through 30. There are so many different scriptures that validates the reason why a believer becomes sick and don't get healed. And this is one of the key points. is recognizing, and when I go to take the Lord's Supper, the communion, when I'm going to take communion, have I examined my heart? Have I asked God to forgive me for my sins? Have I allowed the blood of Jesus to cleanse me from unrighteousness? So when I go before God's presence to take the Lord's Supper, that I'm in right standing, in right relationship with the Lord, or am I eating unworthily? And he said, for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you. Another reason, 
fear of uncertain illnesses such as cancer that has opened the door to the spirit of infirmity. Many people in the body of Christ, they fear the unknown. They walk around tiptoeing through the tulips. They cautiously step stepping through life, looking and expecting stuff to happen because you're not really seeking God's face and praying for God to cover you. So for uncertain illnesses to happen, we fear it because I don't want to get sick. I don't want cancer to get me. I don't want, I want diabetes to take control of my life. I don't want this to happen. I don't want that to happen. So we're not praying against these things, which is costly going through life, doing what we know what's best to do instead of covering ourselves in the blood of Jesus. You know one thing about this COVID-19? I was just sharing with some people recently, and a friend of mine today, I told him the same thing. I said, with this, this disease that has impacted our country, I said, God gave me wisdom. He gave me understanding. And in Psalms 91, if you read Psalms 91, the whole chapter, God promises to cover us. Not only that, he promised that sickness will not come near your dwelling, no even near your, your tent. God promises, no matter what's going on around you, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So if God says we're going to main, maintain and rest secure in his presence, it's a guarantee that no matter what comes against you, you protect it. So I was sharing this with someone today, and I said, you know what God told me to do? Plead the blood of Jesus over my body, over my mind, over my spirit. And then take some herbs and some vitamins, things that I know are going to build my immune system. So I take emergency every day. I take black seed oil every day. I take coconut oil every day. I take olive oil every day. I anoint my head with oil. I even drink the oil. And, and then I don't know any that. But I take a live liquid multivitamin. Why? Because all these different things work together to support the body immune system to build you up against diseases and sicknesses. So we got to not only be practical, but we got to be spiritual in the midst of being practical. Because what God says to do is we, we got to seek his face for what he wants us to do to maintain our health. But a lot of people are not doing that. They're doing things the best way they know to do according to their own accord and not seeking God's face. So things are happening. Another point is unbelief or ignorance of the word of God. A lot of believers in these last days are slipping away from the truth. They get into a place of unbelief because sickness is taking their loved ones, it's taking their closest companion, it's taking their friends away. It caused death in many different people that they are familiar with that were in their lives. So because this happened, now people fall, don't want to have faith in God, don't want to trust God. They think God's a hoax because, they, because God allowed this to happen. God, why God take my loved one? Why God did this? Why God did that? When my Bible tells me there's life in the blood, God has life in his blood that produces life. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And if God promises he came to get life in that more abundant, God knows when your time is going to be, and he will allow death to take you. It's not God's will that we die. It's God's word, will that we live and abide in his truth. And if you're abiding in God's truth, it doesn't matter what comes against you, God promises to cover and protect you. Another reason, a breakdown of the body or the mind because they have been abused by an unrealistic unre workload or lack of property, prop, or lack of proper rest and nutrition. So a lot of people don't, like I just mentioned, don't do things to help maintain their health. So you find yourself getting weak, getting sick, getting broke down, working too hard. Many people working two or three jobs just to survive. Some have lost their jobs so they worry themselves sick. All these different things plays a major role in your life and will rob you of your rest and your nutrition. Because when you lose your nutrition, I mean you're not eating. You're not maintaining your health by eating the right things that you need to put in your body. 
Then another reason is hereditary. My mama had heart disease. Disease. My father had heart disease. My, my mama had diabetes. So I'm going to get diabetes. I'm going to get heart disease. The things that are hereditary, God says, Jesus stripped the enemy of the curse. Those things of hereditary sicknesses are familiar spirits. And we talked about that a while ago. Familiar spirits are the things we got to recognize and cast down. Because just because somebody else dealt with certain types of illnesses or diseases does not mean you have to have it. I refuse to be held captive by some sickness or disease that was passed down from generation to generation to generation. I refuse to get into agreement with the lies of the doctor who says because your mother or your father had heart disease, you, you're also vulnerable or you can become a candidate for heart disease if you don't take this pill or take that pill or do this or do that. I refuse to believe that. I stand on God's word that I have been redeemed from the curse of the law of sickness and death. And because I've been redeemed, I've been set free by the power of the blood of the lamb. And because I've been set free, I'm no longer a victim of those different symptoms and sicknesses and illnesses and situations that others deal with. And a lot of things happen because of the way we think. If your mind gets into agreement with negative things, that's what's going to attract itself to your life. So neg negative things like sickness, we can, be, we can speak ourselves well or we can speak ourselves sick. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Deuteronomy and Proverbs 18.21 Death and life is in the power of, 20, of, of the tongue. So if I speak myself to be sick, I'm going to get sick. If I command myself, I command my day, I command my spirit to be well, my day to be prosperous, to have a joyful day, I'm going to have just what I say because I spoke it in agreement with God's word by faith that it is mine. Jesus says, you have what you say. So whatever you speak in agreement with it is what's going to manifest in your life. Another reason is some people subconsciously desire to be sick for various illogical reasons, nonsense. We subconsciously be around negative people who keep speaking sickness on themselves and I be around that person so long, they're so negative until my subconscious attaches itself to their consciousness you hear what I just said? My subconscious attaches itself to their consciousness of negativity, of sickness and disease. And before you know it, it begins to manifest in my body. And now I'm sick. And one thing about God's word, he said, if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Another point. People continue to walk in the flesh instead of the spirit. You keep walking according to the dictates, the influences, the enticements, the allurement of the enemy. You're going to have the results of the flesh, which is contrary to the word of God. And anything that opposes God is an enemy of God. But if you come into agreement with what God says about you, receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save your souls, you receive the healing in every area of your life, not just physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Everything about you will be healed according to God's word. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. And this is in Galatians chapter 5 said adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, 
idolatry, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, murderers, drunkenness, reveling, and such like, of which I tell you before and have also told you in time past, they that do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. They that do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And that lasciviousness is a word which means offensive sexual desire. Offensive sexual desire given into your flesh. And that reveling is another word for rebelling against God. And a lot of times we find ourselves giving in to rebellion because we turn away from the truth. We allow the enemy to influence us. And because of that, our minds have drifted like the prodigal son from our father to follow after the desires of our flesh. Which leads us down a pathway of destruction. So I pray that something has been said to encourage you to entice you, to lure you, to bait you, to come back to the Word of God, to study the Word of God, to speak the Word of God, to manifest the Word of God in your life by giving in to the Spirit of Truth and allowing the Lord to empower you and influence you to seek His face and to turn from your wicked ways then God says he will heal your land. So, Father, tonight, I thank you for this word. I pray that something has been said or done that would encourage your people, Father, to study the word of God, to meditate on the word of God, to mutter the word of God, to get the word rooted and grounded in their hearts, to inspire them to follow after you, Lord God, in truth and righteousness. That you change their filthy thinking to the mindset of Christ. That life and peace, a mind of truth to follow after the origin and the nature of who you are. And Father, I bind every demonic force, every assault, every tactic, every sickness, every spirit of infirmity. In the name of Jesus. And I send it back to the pit of hell. Where it come from. And I loose the power. Of God's word. To transform. The minds of every believer. Who hear this word. Receive this word. That it will be planted in their hearts. To sprout roots. Of righteousness and truth. That their lives will be changed. From this day forward. To follow righteousness. And walk in holiness according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to repeat after me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord God, to forgive me for my sins, to come into my heart and wash me clean by the blood of the Lamb. I thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. Your word says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. I thank you for saving me. Now fill me with the Holy Spirit and that with power to be a witness for you in Jesus' name. And I thank you. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, the whole host of heaven is rejoicing over one sinner that's turned his life over to the Lord. I thank you for tuning in tonight. Share this word with someone. We will continue this on next week. And I, I guarantee if you come with an open mind and open heart, God going to fill it. He going to empty you out from all the things that have been planted inside of you. It's not of God. He's going to uproot it. He's going to burn it in his fire. And then he's going to fill you with his presence. That his glory will fill your tabernacle. Until next week, thank you for tuning in again, and God bless you. Shalom. Peace be unto you.
Amen.